anyone that's watched the channel for a little while knows that I like pressure fermentation, pressure transfers, and also dry hopping under pressure or a low oxygen situation. Recently, Brewers Hardware sent me their gigantic, I just think it'd be used as a dumbbell, I think, <laughs> gigantic dry hopper. And it works absolutely awesome. The only catch to it is that you really need a three inch tri-clamp port on your fermenter in order to be able to use it. You could do a funnel or something like that with the tri-clamp like one inch or two inch, one and a half inch or two inch to three inch, but I think you're just asking for trouble if you do that. So after they developed this one, they came out with the other version of it, which is for inch and a half tri-clamp fermenters. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how it performs and what all it comes with, as well as a special offer if you're interested in buying one. Full disclosure on this, Brewers Hardware did send me both of those devices for testing and use to see what I thought about them and do a video to share them with you. Now, if you're interested in purchasing the device in this video, be sure to mention Short Circuit of Brewers and your t-shirt size in your order comments and they'll send you some swag. So thanks to Brewers Hardware for hooking up the viewers that wanna purchase this thing and get a little swag. The t-shirts are pretty cool. They got a big logo on the back, logo on the front. So thanks to Brewers Hardware for hooking up my audience. So the device is actually, I'll go through what all it includes. It includes on the top, it includes a ball lock fitting to be able to inject CO2 into the chamber to rid, rid it of any oxygen. The kind of unique thing about the Brewers Hardware version of this, it comes with a ferrule that has a pressure relief valve built into it. So they actually custom welded this into the ferrule and it's it works really well because when you have the thing completely assembled, it's actually underneath of the sight glass so that whenever you go to purge the oxygen out, basically the, the CO2 is coming in from the top and then you can purge the oxygen from, from inside the chamber of it with the PRV valve in the bottom. Now it does come in a couple different options and one of the options actually is not going to be available until January, but it's the option that I actually have and that is the ball valve version. Now they do sell it currently with a butterfly valve. I really like the ball valve version because of the fact that there's not any obstruction in the center of the, the opening where the hops have to fall through. Because I've seen a lot of other people making these type of devices and using a butterfly valve. And I've seen them get stuck, quite frankly, quite a bit. So the ball valve looks to reduce the chances of that happening. I'm not going to say it completely eliminates any possibility just because of the fact that there's a lot of different situations. And, you know, if your hops are kind of wet from being frozen or whatever, you could have some issues. But it does certainly reduce the possibility of it getting clogged. So along with that, they also include the sight glass and that is a nice full bore sight glass. I know some sight glasses are kind of reduced in size. The glass is reduced, but this is like a full bore, like the same size as all the other fittings on the, on the, uh, on the kit. It does come with three tri-clamp gaskets as well as their really cool red handled tri-clamps. I really like those things. I don't know why they're just pretty cool. So for my testing, I needed to dry hop the total eclipse of the Citra that I just brewed and I attached it to the inch and a half opening on the cap. Now the, the G4 does have a larger opening, but I wanted to test this device. So I put the smaller cap on there that's for a airlock bung and use that. So it called for two ounces of dry hops. And I will tell you that this device does hold two, two ounces of dry hops. It just barely holds them. It's all the way at the top. Uh, one of the things you do need to do is you need to reduce, if you're fermenting under pressure, you need to reduce your pressure down to about five PSI before you actually open the valve and everything because they say that you know not to exceed five or seven PSI on the device. So I reduced the pressure down on that, loaded my hops in, and then purged the oxygen out using a ball lock on top and you know purging with the PRV valve. I let it sit for a little while and then came back again and hit it with a little bit more CO2 just to make sure everything was completely gone. And then it was the moment of truth. And one thing I'll tell you is you definitely wanna open the valve slowly on this and I think it kind of gives the hops the ability to kind of shuffle down and fall through the opening because I did try this device previous to this and opening the valve really fast. I did have a few times where the hops got stuck, but this particular instance, I went a lot slower than I had before, which I think is key going really slow and opening it slowly. And I heard everything start to fall and then everything fell completely through. 
So, you know, it worked as intended and I didn't have any hops hung up in the valve or anything like that, as I have seen, you know, some people have issue with it online. So, um, you know, I think the device works really cool. Um, it's definitely a great way to add dry hops or any other, you know, if you're going to add a liquid or something like that to your, to your uh, beer after fermentation, I think it's definitely a good option for that as well. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of it. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. We certainly do appreciate it. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.